Hello and welcome to another edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in downtown Brevard, North Carolina. It's Monday, so I'm at home and I'm coming to you from my house. And I thought we'd just do a really quick one today. We had virtual sit and stitch yesterday and I'm pretty pooped. So <laughs> still recovering from that. It's always fun. We do that once a month on Sundays. You can check out the Sideshow, my other YouTube channel, or you can go to Instagram and Facebook to find out more information about that. I'm going to try not to edit this too much, and if, even if I say something a little wonky. So, so for life lessons today, I'd like to talk about taking your time. I have a lot of knitters and crocheters who come into the shop and take lessons with me and they feel pressured, they feel rushed to get in the most they can for the hour or so we have together. And so they rush, they try to go fast and oftentimes that means they mess up and they have to do it again. So the big life lesson there is take your time. It will take as long as it takes and we will get through what we get through. And I use, I fall back on quotes from The Princess Bride all the time because I'm a child of the 80s. I was born in 77 and The Princess Bride is one of my favorite movies of all time. And I quote the phrase, you rush a miracle man, you get rotten miracles. And if you don't know The Princess Bride, it's not funny, but it still works. It's still relevant, right? If you try to go too fast, it may end up taking longer. And your or your end product may not be as good. I've had that happen to me. I rush to do something. I stay up too late to get something done, something like that. And it comes out looking kind of crappy. The biggest thing I'd like to share from that, I mean, I, I think this lesson could go a bunch of different directions. And it may, in fact, and I may want to give it a couple of different names. But one of the things that will happen when you rush is it could take longer. The other thing is, it could come out kind of crappy. You rush a miracle, man, you get rotten miracles. Try to go too fast. Your end product is not as nice as you would like it to be. Another reason people rush is because they feel a sense of competition. I also have knitters and crocheters who come into the shop and say, well, I'm not a very fast knitter. Or... The other question of, well, how long should this take? Those are both things that I kind of got, I've grown inside a little bit because we go at our own pace. We knit how we knit, we crochet how we crochet. You could be, you could be slower than someone else. You could be faster than someone else. You probably are slower and faster than different people. <laughs> we all do things at our own pace and that is actually a really good thing. It, it's not a competition. It's not, well, I'm not faster than the person next to me, and therefore, I'm not a good knitter. I, I struggle with that all the time when, with people who come into the shop. And the life lesson from that is don't compare yourself to other people. You are going to be the knitter or crocheter that you are, and that is worth celebrating. That is an awesome thing. You are going to be the person you are at doing other things too. I used to teach art, and I would have intro art students who would just look at the paper of the person next to them. And if the person next to them had more inherent talent or had been taking drawing longer or was coming back to it, they might have a different skill set than the person who was just starting. And that's okay. It's not a competition. It feels like it. We have raised ourselves in this country, in this world, very often to compare ourselves to our neighbor and to try to say, am I better or worse than that person? And if I'm worse, there's a problem. And it's only okay if I'm better. So I have to be better. We have people who come into the shop, friends who come into the shop and say, well, my friend is the good knitter. I, I try, but my friend is the really good one. I really struggle self-value with a statement like that. Everybody who knits is a knitter and some people will be faster. Some people, their stitches may look cleaner in the end but everyone hopefully can find some kind of joy and satisfaction out of it. 
again, I think that is a lesson that we could take into the wider world. We should celebrate where we are and what we're doing. It's not a competition. Now, I will make a full disclaimer. I struggle with this heavily. I struggle with self-judgment. I usually put, I often can put the label on it of others' judgment. I mean, I can come full circle on that. When I'm teaching and someone feels this urge to rush, they feel like they're being judged. They feel like I'm watching them and I'm like, why are you taking so long? And I'm not. But if that is what we feel inside, that is what we really feel like we're seeing from others often. And so it starts inside of ourselves to let go of that judgment or to say, you know what, it's okay. And that is something I am still practicing and I am still learning. And I would love to be on that journey with y'all. It's something I can observe when I am teaching and sitting with someone who is just starting out or somewhere in the middle of their crochet and knit journeys. And it's something I'm still working on for myself. But all the takeaways from this, you rush a miracle, man, you get rotten miracles. Take your time. You craft at the speed that in which you craft, and that's okay. Again, going back to that, how long will it take me to make this sweater? I don't know. Enjoy the journey. It's a very zen process, not goal. Enjoy the journey and love what you have when you're done with it. If you have a deadline for a holiday knitting or for a gift for others, Again, that pressure can often lead to mistakes, can often lead to having to redo it, or could lead to a result where you say, I could have done better if I'd taken my time. Cherish where you are. It will take as long as it takes. Learn, I was about to say, learn, learn some self-love. That's a hard lesson to learn. And that's an ongoing process. And I often tell my lessons when they come into me, it's about patience and forgiveness. And when I say that, I'm talking about patience with yourself and forgiving yourself. And that can one, be one of the hardest things to do. Take your time. Engage in some self-love. It's okay. Try to let go of some of that judgment. And see how much of that you can take into your day-to-day -day life. It can make it fuller. It can make it more full of love, not just from yourself, from, but from others. Things will take as long as they're going to take. You rush a miracle, man. You get rotten miracles. Love yourself. Take care of yourself. And take your time. I think you might be very happy with the end product. And as I always like to say when I sign off, may your crafting be filled with joy and confidence. Subscribe if you'd like. Check out our other YouTube channel, The Sun Dragon Sideshow, if you want to see Liz and I gabbing about all of the projects that we're working on right now. Check out Facebook for events and things. We do a lot of online virtual events right now, especially in the days of COVID because we're not quite done yet. And if you'd like to support some of the work that I do here and that we do over at the shop, you can always go over to patreon.com slash sundragon. But subscribing here and checking out the sideshow and checking us out too, online or in person, until you buy some yarn, that's all free. So <laughs> thanks again. Have a great rest of your week. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.